Here we go. Uh, today's class, number one, classic American centerpiece. If you're in the flower business, most of your clients are not going to do the 150. Remember the 150 we did yesterday? How many of you were going to buy that? Not a whole lot. So in the reality of the world, most the centerpiece we're going to do now is typically what most Americans are going to order. It's called the classic American centerpiece. Got it? What makes an American, among other things, is your flowers are space. Instead of that solid European mass design we did yesterday, which was, what, 125, 150, depending on what's your labor charge, uh, we space our flowers out. We get more bang, more look for the buck. Got it? So the first thing you're going to do is green in. You can green in on a Monday for a Saturday wedding. If you're really busy, you could probably green in two weeks ahead of time. The, this is lemon leaf, or salal. It is the base green that florists use for all their work. Altarpieces, centerpieces, garlands, uh, archways. So lemon leaf, it's, it's your building block. Um, so we do a classic centerpiece. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to build a, I call it a ladybug. So watch this, three or four pieces at the, three or four at least at the most today, you always set the width of your design. How wide is the centerpiece gonna be? So I'm just gonna go all the way around. You always do, what deck is this? Louder. Thank you. This is the what deck? This is the, we gotta do all the decks today. Uh, so I'm taking my greens, I'm filing them all the way around, leave a little space in between them, just like in a garden, if flowers, do you know that if they're too tight they die? So leave a little space between them. So you're setting the width. How big is this going to be on my wedding table? So you go all around, little space in between them. You're gonna do your whole lower deck. So a designer might do one for you and say, I want, if you're new, I want 30 more greened in. So I'll also give you a prototype if you're working for me and say set 30 more of them. So you're going all the way around the outside. Like that. It's where you use the nice tips off of this lemon leaf. And then when you go all the way around the outside, you're gonna set the height. How high do I want this centerpiece to be? Notice I'm using my greens as the way they grow, arching out. Don't, does the green grow this way or that way? That way, so use it that way. So now I'm gonna set the penthouse, the top. How, how tall do I want this centerpiece to be? Right about there. So take three pieces and set them in the center. Like that. So I set the width, I set the height. Now I'm gonna fill in the upper deck. Lower deck, upper deck, penthouse. And I'm gonna go right there. See that ladybug forming? It's all about the dome again today. So I'm gonna set my mid upper deck all the way around, all the way around. And then I'm going to fill in between the decks until I get a nice round domey shape. And then for flowering, all you have to remember is all the flowers sit on the back of the ladybug, right here. You don't bury any flowers into your greens, they all sit nicely right on her back. So when you have the whole thing greened in, I'm almost there, you don't want it too tight, don't want it too loose. If you look real close, you should still be able to see the foam. I always say that because if you're in a garden and you look through a rose bush into the ground, you can still see the dirt. So don't pack it so tight. There's nothing worse than somebody who overgreens in my flower shop. So, I'm filling in between the decks. Does it look like classic centerpiece already, right? The shape, you all recognize it? So, I'm just gonna put a little more in the penthouse so you get a nice, round, smooth ladybug. Next day, we're gonna do an armadillo. <laughs> Oblong centerpiece. I'm gonna have you do an armadillo sitting on your dining room table, but right now, we have a ladybug. A green ladybug. So I do these up on Monday for a Saturday wedding. I do all my greening in. I have all my centerpieces greened in. I have all my altarpieces greened in. And now, can somebody throw me your green, your red roses? So see the shape? You've seen it before, haven't you? On every wedding you've been to. Now, give me your three roses. We have trachylia, we have sapphire, we have roses. What else did you get today? Tulips 
And uh, mums, give me your roses. This is the focal flower. The focal, the focal point of this design is right here in the upper deck. Because you're sitting at a table, where do you look? Right there. It's not on top. If you put it on top, your eyes will go right there and go all around. If you put it down here, your eyes will go there and then look all around. If you put it where she belongs, in the upper deck, your eyes will go like this and not move. <laughs> so the focal point of a centerpiece is always in the upper deck. A lot of people think it's up on top. It is not. 90% of the time. So there's my focal point right there. Now all you got to do is find a home for everything else somewhere on the ladybug's back. So I've got green, green uh, I'm sorry, white trachylium. I've got three pieces. What shape will I probably do in a classic American design? Triangle. Right. One. This is called trachylium. One of my favorites. Two. And three. Next, I have uh, your, can you give me your uh, bronze mums? Those right there, yes. Next, I have some bronze mums right there. Give me your tulips too, Lawyer. I'm going to steal all your flowers. Bring me all of those and your tulips. All of them. Your brown ones. You have four of them and your tulips. Thank you, my dear. And give me uh, three tulips. So now I've got my bronze mum. Don't forget you got to do that lower deck. Put something down there. Right? And I've got four of these. What shape am I doing? Right. What is what? Square. Triangle. Three is a triangle. Four is a square. So. Hmm? I can't hear you. What is the setting? What is the name of it? Uh, uh, mums. Mums. Simple, plain old mums. Now I've got three tulips. Set your tulips. Remember, these are hydrotropic. They will grow out of your centerpiece. Oh, I didn't tell you that yet, did I? You've got to slice their necks. What do you think of that? Who's got their knife ready? Right here. These are hydrotropic. When you do bridal bouquets, we're going to do uh, the Michael bouquet tomorrow. Uh, and if you don't slice their necks right here, right here. See what I'm doing? Putting a little quarter slice in the neck. I'm going to walk around right there. Was it for? A little quarter slice. It puts their energy into uh, fixing that cut right there. Right? right. Do you think that's longer? No, they'll stop growing. And then I put plastic, black plastic bags over my uh, work to keep the light out. Because th these will go like this. If you don't put a slice in the neck, when you come on Saturday morning, they'll all be excited to go to the wedding. They'll all be like that, and they'll be growing towards whatever light. So they'll all be this and going that way. So they grow after they've been cut. Yeah, they're hydrotropic, exactly, and they grow towards the light. So I'm going to take my tulips, I'm going to put a little cut in them, do a little triangle of... So if you don't, if you don't believe me, don't cut their necks today. <laughs> And you'll see. They'll all be sticking two inches out of your design in about a day. So now I've added my tulips. What else did I give you today? Oh, safflower. So now I'm going to do my safflower. And I have a lot of safflower. So I can use this to unite all my pieces. It's almost like you use uh, an inexpensive flower, but we're going to use safflower. So I'm going to put some in the upper deck. I'm going to put some in the lower deck. I'm going to put some in the penthouse. Here's another tip. When you're designing centerpieces, often you put the smaller buds on top and the older growth down here. Why? Because what does a rose bush have? Buds on the top, reaching for the sun, trying to survive. Old growth towards the bottom. So I'll put my more open flowers, if I have them, down in the lower deck and my bigger flowers in the upper deck. So, see how it's coming together? So we're going to take the sapphire, I'm going to put the sapphire throughout the whole design. It's going to unify all my elements. Get some in that lower deck. Get some in the upper deck. Like that. Cut that leaf sticking up. 
Um, also a good idea is leaf shine that you put on green plants. I'll get some later today to put leaf shine onto this. It adds a reflective light element to your design. It takes off any of the dirt that might be from the farms or, you know, just discoloration. So now I'm getting my safflower throughout the whole thing. And then last but not least, uh, I like to always put a filler in here. And today I'm going to give you some... I call it winterberry, but I don't know what they call it when it's orange, because I'm used to it being red. But we're going to put some winterberry in here, give it a little kick, fall kick, put a little winterberry throughout, and then to, to texture it, like that. And then, I, what did I give you, grevillea? I'm going to give you a little grevillea, so a, a dash of this and a touch of that. And then your grevillea right here. You take a little piece of grevillea and we're going to use this almost as a filler. And it's going to break up all that greening. Classic American design, you don't have a lot of money to fill the whole thing in. You'd like to fill this whole thing in with flowers, but guess what? You don't. That's why Americans order this because they're, it allows them to have a centerpiece under $100. This is about $65. I'm just going to put in a little bit of this grevillea. And I know you kind of look up at my work when I'm teaching, so I'm going to take it and set it on the ground in one second. So breaking this grevillea into small pieces. Got it? What do you think? Yes? When you place the, like the threes, you always keep on the same deck, is that kind of what? When you place the what? Like the threes, like the three roses and the three Yes, and great question. Unless you have multiple of one item, then you want to do ring around the collar. So I would put like, if I had like eight roses, like heavy on the roses, I'd put four, three, and one. Okay. Yes, but usually all on the same deck. In classic American. Now you can break the rules, of course, later on. But right now we're doing American design, so yes, it would, theoretically all go on the same level. <laughs>